Good morning, and welcome to worship at St. John's United Church of Christ. We welcome one another with the same words each and every week. Please join with me now. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We have entered into a new year and already there are challenges and there are opportunities. And we seek God's grace and God's guidance for the living of our days. We continue to prioritize our communal and collective health and safety. And we pray for every person in our church family, in our wider community, and in our world. It is indeed a strange time in which to be the church. But on Sunday mornings, we gather together, reminded that we are called by God to be this beloved community. And we focus and center ourselves on that purpose, on that identity, and on that calling. So let us quiet our minds and prepare our hearts, passing the peace of Christ to one another. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Let us prepare to worship God. We worship in the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in this morning's call to worship. The one who calls you together this day yearns for each of you and for all people to hear and be blessed. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Blessed is the one who comes bringing trustworthy words for the healing of the world. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Let us join together in singing hymn number 71, Be Thou My Vision.
assured that the one who calls us to hear and obey already knows the confessions of our hearts and is ready to forgive, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Holy God, you see into each of us and know us fully as creatures in need of your constant care. We confess that we have neither heard your word nor followed your will. We have failed our nation, neighbors, families, friends, and ourselves. Give us ears to hear your wisdom. Lead us to honesty and faith so that we may begin again with renewed strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ have mercy on us, Christ have mercy on us, Lord have mercy on us, Lord have mercy on us. God knows the hearts of those who seek forgiveness, and by grace you have been saved. In Jesus' name, you are forgiven. Your sins are no more. You have been made clean. God strengthens you with freedom through the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Scripture reading comes from two in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. First Samuel 3, 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to, begun to grow dim so that he, that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Psalm 139, 1 through 6, and 13 to 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit up, when I lay down, and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is so high that I cannot attain it. 
For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearful and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my uniform substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. 1 Corinthians 6, 12 to 20. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. This ends the reading of the Holy Scripture. May God lay his blessings upon it. Good morning, it is time for the children's time and I invite anyone to be listening and hopefully we will be covering some things that might be appropriate for all of you. First of all, I'd like to review a few things that Roxanne has gone over with the symbols all about the church and we have had reminders of how our visible symbols of Christianity work, the things that we see and today, I think we're going to be talking about more of the invisible things, the things that show us that we are Christians and that we believe. When we are talking about God, um, it's, it's kind of different because our scriptures tell us that God knows all things and sees all things even before we are aware. Actually, that's kind of scary but at the same time, how very true. And that's amazing that we believe that so that we do, and do we see God? Do we see God anywhere? We think we don't see God, but actually God is everywhere. And where he is and what he looks like depends on you. It is one of those things that you look around and you're watching um, all kinds of things and knowing all things and we don't know all things and we don't see all things, but he does. But the things that help God are things like our parents. Our parents see lots of things that we're doing. Sometimes the good stuff and sometimes not the good stuff. And those parents are acting like God for us all the time. And they are watching us and they're saying, yes, I am God's helper. I will help God make sure that all of us are doing the right things and sharing the right things. And if we need corrections, well, sometimes that happens too. So we have to remember that God's presence is everywhere. He's everywhere. Then we go to another, another story in the Bible, and that's the story of Samuel. He had not found God yet, but God found him. He kept calling his name, Samuel, Samuel, 
Samuel. But Samuel thought it was his priest, Eli, who was calling him. So he went to Eli and Eli said, no, I, I didn't call you. And finally, Eli realized it was God calling. God was calling to Samuel. And Samuel didn't know it was God. And the fourth time, Samuel answered. And he said, Lord, I, I am answering your call. I am saying, Lord, for thy servants, I am here. I am listening. And so God went ahead and did so many good things through Samuel because Samuel was listening. And so we listen for God to call us. We will know when that happens. We always do. Jesus was finding his disciples too. And he was uh, on his way to Galilee. This is another story. And he invited Philip to go along. And he said to Philip, follow me. And they came upon Nathanael. And Nathanael was going to end up being one of the disciples, but he didn't know that yet. Because again, Jesus is God's son and Jesus knew what was going to happen. And Jesus knows because he's God's only son. And he told Nathaniel that he would see many great things if he followed him. So we have to realize that I have some visuals for you that God knows and sees all things. So here we have eyes that are seeing everything. We also know that we want God tells us that we need to listen. So this is not Dumbo the elephant. This is a person with big ears listening. And he also wants us to follow him, follow me. And so when you do all these things, all those things help us to realize that God loves all of us. Could we have a word of prayer? God, our Father in heaven, who knows, sees, listens to all our needs, and is there for us always, keep us safe during these troubled times. We lift you up and hold you close to our hearts at all times. Amen. From the Gospel according to John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. Listen for what the Spirit is saying. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. When he got there, he ran across Philip and said, Come, follow me. Philip's hometown was Bethsaida, the same as Andrew and Peter. Philip went and found Nathanael and told him, We found the one Moses wrote about in the Law and the Prophets. It's Jesus, Joseph's son, the one from Nazareth. Nathanael said, Nazareth? You've got to be kidding. Can anything from Nazareth be good? But Philip said, Come, see for yourself. When Jesus saw him coming, he said, There's a real Israelite, not a false bone in his body. Nathanael said, Where did you get that idea? You don't know me. Jesus answered, One day, long before Philip called you here, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. Jesus said, You've become a believer simply because I say, I saw you one day sitting under the fig tree? You haven't seen anything yet. Before this is over, you're going to see heaven open and God's angels descending to the Son of Man and ascending again. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. 
Amen. I had a wonderful time away. The staycation and professional development via Zoom are not nearly as relaxing and rejuvenating as being with family and friends and colleagues in person. It has been a week filled with catching up and reconnecting, conversations and phone calls, and yes, more Zoom meetings. It is good to be with you today, even as we long to be gathered in our sanctuary, seeing one another's faces and hearing one another's voices, exchanging hugs and handshakes. We give thanks for the gift of technology and our willingness to embrace the opportunities and possibilities that lie before us. The stories this morning from scripture focus our attention on promise and possibility, on God and calling and discipleship. I love the story from Samuel and the unexpected nature of the boy being the one God is calling rather than the longtime priest he is learning from, Eli. Psalm 139 says that God has searched us and known us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are beloved and we give God praise. There's nowhere we can go that God is not there. We may be scared, anxious, and afraid, but God is present with us at work in our lives and in our world. This is not all up to us. God is here. God is calling. God is speaking. And we are listening. The Gospel lesson from John is a story of faith and trust moving from skepticism to discipleship. The Christian faith is passed from person to person. That's how it started with Jesus, and that's how it has been for 2,000 plus years. Faith is less something we learn in a book, even the Bible. Rather, it is experiential and embodied. People become Christians because they have seen what the Christian faith has done for those whom they know. What we discover is faith is less about proof or persuasion, but about invitation. Come and see. Who exactly is Nathaniel? What do we know or not know about him? Very little, apart from the fact that A, he knows Philip, and B, he does not think highly of people from Nazareth. Philip has already had an encounter with Jesus, one that causes him to seek out Nathanael and invite him to have the same experience. Philip desires for his friend to find what he has found. But Nathanael is unique in this sequence because for the first time in John 1, 35 to 51, witness to Jesus is met with resistance. Nazareth, you've got to be kidding. Can anything from Nazareth be good? Nazareth was not a terribly well-known or prestigious place. Nathaniel dismisses and discounts Jesus based on his own preconceptions and prejudices about Nazarenes, those from Nazareth. Sometimes what we think we know about people determines what we are willing to accept about them. We resist new information, nuance, and the possibility that we might be wrong. At least Nathaniel is honest about his biases. He names it outright. Yet neither Philip nor Jesus allow Nathaniel to stay in that space of doubt and denial, resistance and rejection. Philip does not argue with his friend. Perhaps they've had this kind of conversation before, only not about Jesus. Philip does something interesting, something important. He issues an invitation. Come, see for yourself. You don't need me to advertise for Jesus. Experience, and experience him yourself. Whether or not Philip said anything more persuasive than that, we don't know. 
The text doesn't say. What we do know is that the invitation from Philip to Nathaniel was offered and accepted. Come and see. Consider the role that this personal invitation has on Nathaniel. He has an encounter with Jesus that changes his mind and his heart. Philip is his friend, someone he trusts. He's not berated, but invited into a movement, the Jesus movement, and to experience Jesus for himself. People start coming to church most often because someone they trust invited them to come along and venture into new, brave, and unfamiliar spaces to come and see what Jesus is all about. It is always person to person. It is always relational. It is not only marvelous signs that lead to faith, but when people see communities, families, churches, and even larger communities living out in unity the truth of the gospel and offering people a coherent vision for life. Ours is an incarnational faith, for God chooses to come to us through the lowly and the despised. God chooses to come to us through Jesus. Jesus invites us to li into living life differently, valuing community and creation as holy, sacred, and divine. Jesus offers us discipleship, which is not always an easy path, but one worth taking. He will push and provoke, comfort and challenge us, though not always at the same time. Jesus loves us, each one of us, and he invites us to share in the ministry and to follow him. I love that Philip does not defend Jesus. He does not argue about it. He invites his friend to have the same kind of experience that he has had, one in which he meets Jesus and is transformed. Come and see. Nathaniel puts aside his skepticism and resistance long enough to meet Jesus and find faith. He's open to this new experience, which is what changes his mind. God is at work with people like you and me. God is at work in places near and far. God is always at work. Jesus invites us, even when we are doubtful, Jesus encourages us to try a different way. There's a difference between skepticism and cynicism. Nathaniel is skeptical, but not cynical. To be skeptical is to have reservations. To be cynical is to believe the worst of people. It is okay to have a few doubts, to have questions, to take some time making up your mind. Once Nathaniel has this encounter with Jesus, after he decides to come and see, Nathaniel chooses to accept Jesus, deciding for him rather than against him and affirming his faith. John's Gospel is filled with stories about people who meet Jesus and must make up their mind about him to decide for or against him in an instant. This theme starts here and continues throughout John. John is pretty clear. Choose and quickly. But I know that faith for most of us is more complicated and complex. We may need repeat invitations to come and see and spend time with Jesus. There's a lot of hurt and harm caused in the name of religion in the name of Christianity. Thankfully, we are all saints, and we are all sinners, and we are all offered the gift of grace. Philip and Nathaniel each find their way to Jesus. We have no idea how long it took, but we know 
that relationship was crucial and critical. Trust was necessary, and so was an invitation. Come and see. The story we read today is about those first disciples, but it is most of all about Jesus. It is about the word of God coming into the world and meeting him again and for the first time. Jesus' words to Nathaniel are a little difficult and hard to understand. But what we do know is that Jesus demonstrates who he is and what he will be about. One of my family's favorite hymns when I was growing up was Trust and Obey. The hymn never uses the word belief, only trust, indicative of relationships, trust as the foundation, trust which allows us to follow and lead and obey and do the work of building the kingdom of God. Reverend Dr. Donna Schapper, senior pastor of Judson Memorial Church in New York City, wrote in a recent UCC Still Speaking devotional, that the Jesus story is not something we believe, it is something we trust. May we trust in Jesus and in the Jesus story as we are invited and as we invite others to come and see. Amen. Much like many of you, my heart has been heavy my heart has been hurting and burdened. It's been a hard time for us as people we know and love are dealing with illness and grief, where we are continuing to be isolated from the people that we love most and our lives continue to be different and altered and strange. It was wonderful to be away for some time of rest and renewal, and I returned to hear your stories of how you've been getting through or how you've not been getting through, of the pain and the heartache, but also the joy and the blessing and the celebration. And in the midst of all of the tumult and all of the turmoil that encompasses our world, we remember that God is good. Our psalm reminds us that God created us when we were in our mother's wombs. God knows every hair on our head. And like Samuel, we are called. And we are called from places that are maybe unexpected. But God calls us, and God is present with us. So we lift up people that we know and love, and we lift up people whom we may never meet, who are in special need of God's comfort and God's care. We pray not only for others, but we also pray for ourselves knowing that it is not selfish that we do so, but rather a surrendering to God to ask for what we need and to offer what we can. So it is in that spirit of prayer where we are in a space of lifting up our joy and lifting up our concern that we take some time to be honest with God to be open with God, to be transparent with God. Let us spend some time in silent prayer. holy and living, loving God. There are times when it feels as, you, as though you were absent, 
And there are times when it feels that you are so very, very present. Our faith is one of the things that gets us through, that helps us to keep going, that reminds us that there is indeed good in the world and encourages us to be that good, to be that light in the darkness that does not go out, to share love and laughter and kindness wherever we can. Strengthen us when we falter, help us and pick us up when we fall. Help us to listen deeply, to see deeply, to love deeply. Help us to be your hands and your feet in this hurting world. And may we always find rest in your grace and renewal to keep going, to keep living and to keep loving. God, we thank you that there is nowhere we can go that you are not there. And we thank you and are reminded of our belovedness are being seen and being known. Grant us wisdom and courage and grace for the living of these days. All this and so much more we ask in Jesus' name, praying the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are incredibly blessed as a congregation and community, by the gifts that we so freely share, gifts of time and talent and treasure. We give these gifts for the ministry of Christ's church in this place and in this community, knowing that we are indeed building the kingdom of God. Offerings may be mailed or dropped off at the church office, you may inquire with Loretta about electronic fund transfers or giving from an IRA or alternative forms of giving. And we look forward to a time when we jump into the 21st century with some electronic giving uh, that is mobile. But no matter the form in which our giving takes, we give out of generosity, out of spirit, out of love for God and for God's people. Our morning offering will now be received.
and let us together dedicate these gifts. We give you thanks, God of all creation, for the power of your life-giving word, making the winds blow and the waters flow. Receive these gifts from our hands and use them to bring peace and blessing to all your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Go forth in the light and love of God, giving glory to God in all that you do. Depart in peace to do God's will. Walk ever in the light, for Christ is with you evermore to guide you day and night.